okay everything seems to be going well just getting set up this is the first time i have ever done a live usually when i make videos i know that i can edit any little mistakes out but i know that i can't do that during a live stream so please tell me if there was something wrong with the audio or the video cuts out let me know hi lupus uk team how are you guys i'm doing great i have really sweaty palms doing this um i can talk for england but actually quite nervous <laughs> Okay, right. Every, everything looks on my end like it's going okay. Perfect. Thank you, Jack. Hi, how are you? Has everyone got their cup of tea ready? Because I have in this fantastic unicorn mug. It's one of those heat activated unicorn mugs. So it's usually just a purple cloud. Yay! That's good news. That's really, really good news. Okay. You'll have to forgive the fact that I'm probably looking not at the camera and I'm looking down at the screen because I'm trying to see what chat says. Okay. Oh, there are seven of you watching. That's quite exciting. <laughs> Say hello in chat. Don't be shy. I am, I'm a really, really easygoing person, I promise. I don't bite. I don't bite. Okay, so, there, I will be honest, there's not much of an agenda for this live. We're just going to try and take things easy, be very chill. I'm quite conscious that a lot of people might be feeling a little bit lonely at the time like this. Um, so we're just going to do a tea and talk. Hi Sarah, how are you? Oh, we're just going to do a tea and talk. We're going to talk some makeup bits. I have some skincare here that I'm going to talk you through that works well for me. Hi, Danielle. Um, so, shielding. I have been doing a lot of that. Um, I live alone, but I have um, a, an abundance of hobbies. Um, I like doing makeup i like playing with my hair um i've been working on a crochet project that i have here this is my blanket that i've been making this is going to go to a friend um it is taking a long time to crochet because it is rather large but i'm very good at my own company um so i've been finding it okay but I fully appreciate that not everyone finds isolation, shielding, a comfortable experience. So, um, I, I mean, thank you, Sarah. It's taking a long time. <laughs> um, I know that not everyone finds that a comfortable experience being alone, um, particularly if you live alone, if you're flaring, um, that can really really get you down um investing my time in things that are like busy work like cleaning cleaning the flat five times a day is just <laughs> it's excessive but it keeps me happy it makes me feel like my space is clean and pure and it feels a bit more homely oh thank you danielle <laughs> <laughs> rainbow emoji it's taking such a long time but i have found like so many so many youtube videos because youtube is an amazing tool um i found so many youtube videos that have crochet tutorials and the thing about youtube is if you're a beginner and you're into crochet there are so many different patterns that you can follow People usually give you a guide with crochet hooks um, and you're seeing what they're doing but if the, here's a little tip for you if you are feeling like the instructor is going a little bit too fast for you 
you can click, I think it's on the bottom right hand side of the screen and you can actually opt to change the speed of the video which really really helps me um, quite often I'm wondering which which stitch has whoever gone into and um, slowing down the video really really helps hi Barbara how are you I miss you <laughs> your company today is lovely oh thanks it's actually really refreshing having people chatting here and it's just having human interaction is so lovely. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions? Anything to ask me? I'm, I'm like really honestly an open book. I will answer just about anything within reason <laughs> that is appropriate. Um, I have some skincare things here if anyone wants to talk about skincare or makeup i'm not an esthetician i'm not qualified by any means i just i'm really really passionate about makeup and skincare and also a bit of nail art but full disclosure i i didn't i uh, <laughs> didn't paint these myself i bought them on etsy hi nicole how are you <laughs> shout out please that's my bestie. It's so lovely to have you all here to chat to. Genuinely, it is really, really lovely. I was a little bit worried, I'm not going to lie to you. I was a little bit worried that I was going to be solo on this mission. Okay, so um, everyone has their tea ready, okay? First sip. All right, so... Um, my story with lupus um we'll talk a little bit about that my story with lupus started when i was 18. um i was unfortunately ignored by my initial gp and then i went to seek um a diagnosis with the tools that lupus uk have provided the guidance books the how to talk to your doctors um to keep a diary it was really, 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 really cool to have resources that were um, informative and safe to read up on. That helped me seek diagnosis. So um, that's like seven years now that I've been dealing with this and playing with makeup was a really therapeutic way for me to, to sort of love my skin again my skin changed a lot with the butterfly rash you can see actually a little bit of it underneath my uh my makeup here today i've not done too good a job of covering it um someone posted a question for you on our page earlier today can i ask how to source cosmetics that are safe for people with lupus that's such an amazing question okay so full disclosure again not an esthetician not a makeup artist not a qualified makeup anything just a beauty aficionado if you will um <laughs> there is no easy way to answer that question um going to a dermatologist would be my first and foremost answer to that going to a dermatologist to see what your skin is doing is super super important um i have never managed to see a dermatologist i initially tried to go see about my acne but the NHS waiting lists are unfortunately really, really tight and obviously a lot of people want to go see a dermatologist. Your second best bet is um, trial and error. <laughs> Going to a makeup counter, Boots, Debenhams are really, really good. Um, makeup brands I would recommend for particularly sensitive skin are Bare Minerals and Clinique. Um, Clinique and I have never really got along in the makeup game. That doesn't mean to say that they won't work for you. Um, everyone's skin is different, lupus or not. Um, everyone has a different chemical makeup on their skin. And so your face may react differently to a foundation. Um, staying away from cheaper products, so cheap foundations, is a good idea um, because they tend to have more chemically ingredients in them 
at least I find that. Um, and they can be really irritating on the skin, which is a problem in itself because then you start investing in something that is a bit more high-end, a bit more expensive. And to be honest, the makeup industry has so many options that it can be really confusing. Um, but definitely going to a beauty counter, having someone do some swatches, um, get colour match. Quite often what you can ask a makeup artist to do is to give you a sample of the product. Um, makeup artists want you to buy their product so they want you to try the product first. Sampling the product is a really, really, really good idea to make sure that you are not going to break out with it, you are not going to have a reaction to it. Patch testing, um, particularly behind the ear where um, they recommend that you test hair dye in the same way. I would definitely patch test if you have really, really sensitive skin. Um, there are so many cosmetic brands that aim themselves at sensitive skin. Clinique and Bare Minerals are the two that are coming to mind for me. Number seven are usually really good. That is probably your best bet when going into somewhere like Boots. Um, but also, um, who am I thinking of? Um, I use a lot of MAC makeup, but MAC makeup can feel really heavy on my skin. Um, but definitely looking at higher end quality makeup, remembering again, price does not always mean the best, but as a rule in my experience, it usually does mean a little bit safer. They're, um, making sure that you go to someone who knows what they're talking about at a counter to make sure that you are patch testing are some of the best pieces of advice that I can give anyone who is looking for new makeup. There's such a tough one not knowing everyone's like skin makeup. Um, I, I can obviously only speak for myself. Um, I have, I mean, I have some makeup samples here that I was going to talk about. Um, Wet and Wild is the um, drugstore foundation that I'm wearing today. I think I paid about five pounds for it. I have to be wearing a really, really good base with this. And by base, I mean using a primer, something Smashbox, um, Elf. Elf is drugstore, but because it creates such a thick layer on the skin, the foundation seems to irritate my skin less. Um, Obviously, like you don't have to wear makeup, um, but if you're like me and it gives you that boost of confidence, then go for it. You <sighs> Makeup is something that you can always take off if it feels like it hurts or it feels like it's, it's not for you. Um, so <laughs> I know that that was a very long winded way for me to say. I can't make the decision for you, um, <laughs> sorry, um, but getting getting advice, um, definitely seeing a dermatologist. Um, camouflage makeup is something that I would love to be qualified in. I would love to get into camouflage makeup, but um, trying to find a course for that and to be qualified is um, proving quite a challenge. What's the best cleansing routine for sensitive skin when taking off makeup? Barbara. Okay. Okay. Um, so I don't actually have one on my desk here, but I am a, I, I'm what I would consider quite wasteful when it comes to taking off my makeup. Um, there are a lot of eco-friendly alternatives, things such as, um, makeup cloths. I find that makeup remover cloths where you only put water on them and then you take off the makeup really, really irritate my skin. The reason being for that is that it does a lot of dragging on the skin and I would absolutely not recommend those for people with sensitive skin. Um, I have made some of my welts on my face. I get some welts on my cheeks. I have broken some of those open and made them bleed to the point that I have had um, blood pouring down my face, which is an absolute no-no. That's an open wound. Um, 
and I mean, in theory, I shouldn't have even been wearing makeup over a welt, um, but absolute no-no for me. Um, micellar water, something that is designed for sensitive skin, Garnier, are really, really good on my skin, and cotton buds, um, cotton wool pads. Boots have some really, really good um, organic cotton wool um, pads that have one side that's quite rough to really get in the skin, which is a side that I don't use. <laughs> and also not dragging the um, micellar water and the pad around your face. So for example, if you just put like the pad here and just hold it on your face for a minute and then just wipe away in a really really slight circular motion you will take that makeup off and um, the micellar water while it's rested against your face has had time to do its magic therefore it means that the makeup will come off your face without all that dragging motion it's it's about being gentle with your skin you should be gentle with your skin regardless of what skin condition you have or anything to that effect but it is really 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 important that you are so careful with your skin. Um, also, oil-based um, makeup cleansers are really good. I have quite oily skin across my T-zone um, and definitely on my nose. My cheeks tend to be quite dry, so I can get away with an oil-based cleanser. Oil breaks down the particles of the makeup, so it is best if you really don't want to drag your skin about. Um, but other than that, micellar water is really, really, really good an option. How did you learn about makeup coverage of rashes? Are you self-taught or did you have guidance from a skin camouflage service like Changing Faces? Um, I am entirely self-taught. Um, Changing Faces is actually a charity that I would love to get in touch with about um, learning how to do camouflage makeup. But I'm not sure if I would have to do a standard beauty course first or if they would just kind of trust me enough to go into a skin camouflage service. Um, probably not. <laughs> I am entirely self-taught and the reason being is that when I was 18 I went from having this beautifully clear skin. I, as a teenager, was really, really lucky. I never had acne on my face. I never had any facial redness. I had gorgeous baby-like skin on my face. Um, unfortunately, through um, the diagnosis taking so long for having lupus, I noticed more and more damage to my skin in the classic butterfly rash area, which is displayed on the Lupus UK campaign poster for World Lupus Day today. Um, you will see the half and half makeup look. Half of that is my butterfly rash and my bare skin. Um, I actually started watching YouTube videos as a form of comfort and then delving into how to apply makeup. Um, Tati Westbrook, um, Glam Life Guru, was my main inspiration, but since then I have found many other YouTubers um, that are beauty gurus, makeup artists that have techniques for covering rashy skin, um, that doing a foundation base. YouTube, again, is such an amazing tool for learning things. I am entirely self-taught from YouTube. Um, make no mistake, it did take me an awful long time to get a technique down to where I felt comfortable, but having just a little bit of makeup on really, really made me feel like I could rule the world. <laughs> Truly, really, it changed my life. Um, and I know that makeup is not everyone's cup of tea. I know that some men feel like they can't wear makeup. So I think society is changing. There are a lot of male YouTubers that do wear makeup. A lot of actors that are men wear makeup. Um, foundation doesn't have to be heavy. Uh, <laughs> heavy. Foundation doesn't have to be heavy. Um, it's all in the technique. It really is. And when you find a product that works for you, it feels you you can feel like a million dollars. For skincare for years, I use the Ultra Calming Race with Analogica. I have recently discovered Miu Miu. It's changed my skin dramatically. I was diagnosed in 2007 and my skin has been over, all over the place. Oh, 
Danielle, I have never heard of the Ultra Calming Range from Dermalogica. That is another company that if you are having um, any skincare concerns and you would like to start looking into makeup but you have sensitive skin, they are in so many little department stores. I don't think they're in Debenhams, but I think they're in Phoenix quite often. I know that where I live, we have a Phoenix and they are there. Um, I think you can buy their range online as well. I'm unsure if you can buy testers, but that is, a, that is a really good shout, Danielle. Do you have any suggestions for good sunscreen for faces? I am literally looking at the sunscreen <laughs> for faces that I should have brought over to this desk. Yes, so, um, I am about to film, it's going to be today that I film this sun care video. Um, I have about seven different sunscreens that I'm going to showcase in a video. Some that range from cheap like Boots brand foundation, uh, <laughs> foundation on the brain, cheap like Boots on sunscreen for face to um, Garnier, uh, there's a there's a company called Sunbum that I use that's a little, um, it's a pocket sized banana scented, and I mean the scent is really good, banana scented sunscreen for the face. Um, I found that when I was in America, they've recently brought the brand over to the UK. Um, Sunbum is an amazing, amazing brand. They have a little monkey if you want to have, as their logo, if you want to have a Google um, shell that like some of them are like they're my ride or die for sunscreen for faces also important to note on the topic of foundation and sunscreen <laughs> people with lupus obviously tend to wear sunscreen because um, of the light sensitivity the sun involvement with our um, condition if you are planning on wearing makeup in the day, please do not rely on the SPF in your foundation. I have an Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place foundation here that is an SPF 10. My MAC Studio Fix Fluid is an SPF 15. And the Wet n Wild Photo Focus, wow, that doesn't even have SPF in it by the sound of it. That's, um,. <laughs> That's a little bit of a shock. Please do not rely on the foundation to protect you from the sun. It won't. <laughs> um, the SPF will eventually wear off. Unless you are planning on reapplying the foundation to guarantee that SPF coverage, it's not good enough. And I imagine that when it's starting to get a bit sunnier or slightly more hot, although we should be wearing sunscreen all the time, um, you are not going to be wearing six layers of foundation that you're going to reapply. Even if you use a sunscreen as a base and then put foundation over it, how are you intending to reapply the sunscreen over your foundation? It's, it's a tricky one. Um, I would say if you're going somewhere where you're going to have a lot of sun exposure, skip the foundation, skip the makeup. I believe that everyone is beautiful in their own right <laughs> makeup for me is a form of expression art art therapy and it's something that has occasionally got me through the day we don't always need the makeup um keeping the skin protected with the sunscreen is the most important thing JJ, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. My hair loss is just out of control right now. Do you have any shampoo recommendations? Okay. I was on methotrexate about four years ago and started to experience some really, really horrible um, hair loss, um, particularly at the back of my hair, not so much at the front, and my hair started to really thin. I started using a company called Function of Beauty. I have a 12 month review on my YouTube channel. I am about to upload in about three months a one, a two year review, sorry, 
Function of Beauty is a company where you can customize your shampoo and conditioner to your hair care needs and goals. Full disclosure, um, it does not work for everyone. It is quite pricey. I got really lucky that it worked for me because a lot of the comments that I see on their social media sites are that it made their hair um, quite dry. Um, so don't hold me to the fact that it will work. Um, but having a look for shampoos and conditioners that are sulfate free because they can be really drying on the hair and alcohol free. I know that sounds really weird that they would put alcohol in hair care products, but a lot of companies do. It can be very drying on the hair. Um, have you tried Olaplex? Um, Olaplex is something that you should probably speak to your hairdresser about. Olaplex is something that can be a rebonding agent for your hair. Um, I'm not too up to date on any regrowth recommendations. Um, again, definitely speak to um, a professional before you take my advice. <laughs> um, have you had a talk with a dermatologist or um, your GP about any hair loss supplements or anything they can give you if you're deficient in anything or is it just purely lupus? Um, all I know is that when I started with my hair loss, it was based around the medication. Um, I felt quite fortunate to not have um, involvement from lupus in my hair. But it, it, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. It, it, it's really heartbreaking um, when you go through the physical changes. Naxin. A lot of people have recommended Nyxin to me too, Danielle. Um, I personally have never tried it. Um, but um, Nyxin, I believe, are on Beauty Bear now, which is funny because I'm doing a giveaway of the of two £10 gift cards today. So we're going to do a... If you're ready, <laughs> if you're ready, <laughs> I'm going to ask a trivia question. Um, it's a really, really, really easy trivia question. Um, and then if you guys want to take a minute to reply in the chat, then you guys can be in for the chance to win one of two Beauty Bear £10 gift vouchers. Purchased by me, because you have been so kind to be here. So the question is, and you've got a minute to answer, and I'll pick a winner at random. And then we'll do the second giveaway um, just before the live stream ends in about 30 minutes. So, what is the name of the UK's nationally registered lupus charity? I'll repeat that again. What is the name of the UK's nationally registered lupus charity? Just answer in the chat and then I will pick a winner at random for the £10 gift voucher for Beauty Bay. I just thought that a little giveaway would be something to brighten up people's day. Because who doesn't like free things? <laughs> this piece of hair is really, really bugging me. And the camera's inverted, so every time I look at it, I go to touch the other side. JJ and Heather got it right. I'm going to give everyone else a... And Danielle, Shell. Dawn. Nicole. leave that there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So we'll stop at Roxanne. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pick a number between one and seven. Five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Dawn, congratulations! You've won! 
If you um, want to send me a message with your email address on my Best of Beauty page, um, I will send the code to you. I'll just open your profile in another tab so that I, uh, I can make sure that you do actually uh, manage to get in touch with me. I know that technology can be a real pain. Okay, so well done Dawn. There will be another opportunity to win the second one uh, in about, we'll say 25 minutes just before we start to wrap things up. Does anyone else have any questions? The answer was the tissue care, of course. <laughs> Honestly, I'm an open book. If you want to ask anything within reason, um, I I will probably have an answer. Hi, Carly. Um, <laughs> how do I make the perfect cup of tea? Um, it's okay, John. <laughs> um, how do I make the perfect cup of tea? Okay, um, I'm a Yorkshire tea girl. Um, I will accept nothing less than Yorkshire tea. I am a northern girl. So, so I feel like it is a birthright, um, born and raised in Yorkshire. Um, so tea bag in first, hot water, leave to brew for about three minutes, take the tea bag out and then a splash of milk in. I kind of like it to look like builder's tea. <laughs> Although I'm a little bit offended that Carly didn't know that because um, Carly and I are friends. <laughs> I guess I'm just going to have to check that you um, make the perfect cup of tea um, next time I manage to see you. Anyone else have any questions? totally okay if it's about TV shows, movies. Kylie doesn't make the TV. <laughs> How do you talk about skin and hair with your consultant? Do you think they take these issues seriously? Okay, um, <laughs> again, a basic question, <laughs> like this UK. Um, that's a difficult one. That, that, is, that is a difficult one. Um, I have had a, I'll, I'll be brutally honest, I have had a lot of um, distrust and misplaced trust with um, the consultants that I have seen for both lupus, for my skin, for everything in between like that. Um, I feel like particularly they don't understand what lupus is, which is why it's so important to campaign for awareness. Um, no, I don't think they take the issue seriously enough. Um, I particularly feel like as a tool, I was 18 when I started raising these problems. I particularly feel like I... As an 18 year old to 25 year old now walking into a doctor's office and talking about issues such as me being embarrassed by my skin or me being concerned by my skin i feel like i get a lot of the roll eye, roll eye response with it's it's vanity but why can't it be vanity what is wrong with wanting to feel like you look beautiful or wanting to feel like you look look like a million dollars like what is wrong with that like <laughs> why are we so ashamed of wanting to look good and why am i being shamed for that when i seek advice because it gets me down 
like confidence is such a brutal thing to have broken um which is why i turned to makeup um do you think they take these issues seriously enough no um <laughs> there will be some amazing amazing doctors and consultants out there that will treat you like you are meant to be treated but it can be really really heartbreaking to not feel like you're acknowledged to feel like you've kind of been tossed aside a little bit um these services are overrun and underfunded i completely completely appreciate that um but there there just there has to be more like more attention to detail more attention to patients um my my confidence is everything like and to a lot of people if they don't feel like they look good they don't feel like they look good if that makes sense how do you talk about skin and hair to your consultant i am really really good at following the advice lupus uk gave me about six seven years ago which was to keep a diary and what i did with my skincare and hair care is i kept a diary and it was a mood diary of how i felt about myself the problems that i was having with my skin the days that my skin would have welt on or the days that my hair felt like it had really come out when i was brushing it those are really really good tools to keep track of things um there's it, honestly keeping a diary writing down even on a calendar a sheet of paper in the back of a book on a notes app on your phone um keeping a note of the times and dates things like that how you felt about yourself because i believe that that is that is worthy of being listened to Why do you choose to fragrance to use fragrance in your skincare? I've always avoided it due to sensitive and lupus rash and things like that. Yeah, totally agree. Um, if you can avoid it, avoid it. I just, for vanity purposes, really, really, really love the smell of fragrance in my hair. Um, it is purely personal choice. I do not advise anyone to really fragrance their hair um i just i just like that makes me feel good and if that makes me feel good then i feel like my day goes a little bit better um hi there if i follow you on twitter love your attitude i have ethel to ethel to you too hi jill that's so cool to hear hi from twitter <laughs> it's been really really overwhelming the response like people saying that they love the attitude i have where my mum would probably disagree. <laughs> Jack, what has lupus taught you about life? Um, that's a really good one. Um, hmm. Let me think about that one for a second. Um, lupus has taught me not necessarily all negative things, um i try to look at the positives about things um as much as i can lupus has taught me a lot of resilience <laughs> a lot of resilience and i feel like people will have solidarity with that feeling you feel like you just have to have some form of resilience to cope um it has taught me that not everyone will be considerate that not everyone will understand and that it is not my job to make them understand i have become very aware of who i can rely on and who i cannot which is a sad state of affairs but it's important to know where your alliances are and who cares about you and that was a very difficult life lesson to learn at 18 um but i i think it's helped me grow as a person it's made me more considerate definitely more patient again my mum may disagree <laughs> it's definitely made me more patient and i think kind towards other people dawn my consultant does not take me serious about my skin i think maybe because he's a man I hate having to wear makeup every day you see that that is a that is a very 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 good point to make um i don't 
necessarily think that I have personally ever felt like that. Um, but I think I've mostly seen female consultants about the cosmetic things, such as like hair and skin. Um, which I don't know if that's more insulting that woman to woman they don't really understand. But I think everyone should have empathy about that. Everybody. I'm sorry, Dawn, that sucks. I don't have Roxanne. I don't have lupus, but my daughter did. She died from complications caused by it in 2011. Oh, Roxanne, I am so, so sorry to hear that. How can we parents, friends, support lupus patients with these issues of self-esteem? Please stop apologizing for wanting to look and feel good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that validation, Roxanne. <laughs> thank I needed that. I think I'm just a typical Yorkshire person that will just apologize for everything. I walk into doors and apologize to the door. Um, I'm really, really sorry to hear that, Roxanne. That's that's incredibly incredibly heartbreaking how can we parents and friends support lupus patients with these issues of self-esteem be their advocate go to appointments with them um suggest that you go to appointments with them because i found it really hard to ask someone to come with me um having someone else in the room is kind of like a strength in numbers thing i know that sounds really stupid because it's not an attack um, but it is purely that kind of like solidarity feeling of being able to have someone fight your corner for you, which is why I'm enjoying doing the best of beauty stuff as much as I am, because I want to be able to fight someone else's corner with them. I'm a tough cookie. <laughs> like, I, I like, I want to make other people feel good. I want other people to be the best that they can. Um, being their advocate learning about what lupus is is a really really good start using the resources on lupus uk um just being an advocate that's all i wanted that's honestly all i wanted when i was first diagnosed with lupus um even i didn't really understand what lupus was but i remember my mom she must have found the lupus uk website i remember my mom um googling what lupus was the symptoms and we had a really good chat when I'd gone home from university. Um, I found things quite difficult um, with my joints. I really found it quite hard to move about. Um, I felt a little bit like my dignity had been taken away. Um, when I lived at university with my flatmates, they had to help me go to the bathroom sometimes, which is just an 18 like yo that's like <laughs> that is really really stripping of dignity um but having someone that understood what i was going through and that would advocate for me and fight my corner and just having someone to listen to how frustrating it was to feel like i was trapped in my own body sometimes was really really cool really really cool Another question we've received on our Facebook here. My 14 year old daughter has lupus. How should she take care of her skin? She doesn't use makeup yet. Thank you for the answer. That's a really cool question as well. Um, again, if you can, a dermatologist is your best bet. Um, I would hate to say anything that was gonna ruin her skin or upset her or anything to that capacity she's 14 oh gosh that like i thought being 18 was hard and i can't imagine what she's going through at 14. how should she take care of her skin i from my personal experience again don't take this as gospel my personal experience is having a good skincare routine because that felt to me like i was keeping the bacteria away from my skin which was kind of doing the job for me. Um, being on immunosuppressants, I was noticing that if I had, or at least I think I was noticing, that when I was getting more breakouts and more rashy, I think it was because I 
didn't necessarily have a good skincare routine. Obviously being on immunosuppressants means that your body isn't going to fight infection or bacteria as well as it should. Um, therefore the bacteria on my face is just festering. Um, so I use some products that I actually have here because I was wondering if that kind of skincare question was going to come up. I use, now this is pricey but it works. <laughs> I use the Elemis Gentle Foaming Facial Wash. This is so, so gentle on the skin. It is not perfumed. It's like a balm. It is gentle foaming. Like it, it is what it says on the tin. Um, a tiny amount goes such a long way. I've had this for about a month now and I'm, I'm nowhere near halfway through it. And I use it every morning and every night and then i rinse my face and then i use a toner um again beauty bay have a fantastic like starter set for sensitive skin um for toners and everything i use any kind of toner that just closes up the pores again and then i use the elemis hydro boost day cream or night cream i'm a little bit annoyed at myself because i didn't pick the sensitive skin option um this actually has perfume in it luckily i did a patch test and i don't break out with it and it doesn't irritate my skin but i don't see why a skincare product needs to have perfume in it i guess it's because it's a luxury item again lms is not cheap um take her to boots have someone do a skincare test on her at clinique at Elemis, the only way I got into the Elemis brand was because they have a free, no obligation to buy anything, skin assessment where they will test everything from facial redness, how big your pores are, um, acne, um, how much UV damage you have. I was surprised that I had a fair bit across my cheeks um, and... Honestly, I think Clinique do the investing in something that is worth the money, but also designed for sensitive skin. Oh, Danielle giving a shout out to her friend for going with her to appointments. That's a good friend. Kelly, hi Kelly. Uh, what advice do you have for people who have just been diagnosed? Um, that's a really good question. I'm trying to think back to what I wish I'd known. Um, people who have just been diagnosed. Being your own best advocate, tell a friend. Um, do some Googling. Um, use the resources on Lupus UK. Um, being your own best advocate for yourself means to me um, knowing your stuff, looking at research, seeing about how flares come on, how you can prevent them, if at all, looking at the medication options that you have, um, keeping a diary of all your symptoms and when they happen and if you've eaten anything that day or if you've had sun exposure that day those are the things that I really wish I'd known because they would have helped me be diagnosed sooner and get on medication that worked for me sooner thank you for your condolences and saying and for your saying that advocacy is important my husband and I did that through her time with lupus she was 14 when diagnosed and we were at her deathbed and all the times in between but there were times I felt like we were being overbearing. Honestly, Roxanne, I don't think she would have felt that way. I don't know your daughter, but I, I feel like there are so many people out there that struggle alone, that do this solo. And that, that is kind of why I do what I do with Best of Beauty. I, I felt so alone for so long, even though I had an albeit small support group, I, I did. <laughs> Excuse me, I felt really, really alone. But once I got past the initial anger stage, because I was angry, like I was angry at being um, chronically ill. Like I was 18 years old and I had that why me attitude. Like, um, and there's 
like there is so much anger that comes with chronic illness because it comes a lot of the time out of nowhere. I was living a perfectly normal life of going to university and then all of a sudden I was really, really, really unwell. Um, and I felt like people didn't understand and oh, it was so liberating when people started to understand, when people started to acknowledge what lupus was. My friends sharing my like post today about lupus and sharing the post there like my <laughs> I had to go away and have a little bit of a cry because that to me is their advocacy they're fighting my corner for me they're wanting people to have awareness for people like me um and I just, honestly there's so much power in being an advocate and having a support system so so much power Dawn, loads of research helped me deal with lupus and still keep a diary a year on from being diagnosed. It is such an important tool, isn't it, Dawn? Like, such an important tool. Um, there are so many printouts that you can use on um, Google <laughs> for um, diaries, uh, buying a diary, a notebook. Like I said, using the notes tab in your phone are really, really, really good ideas for keeping a list of what's going on. Um, I would also list anything that's happened during that day. I didn't realize like how much my mental health and lupus were in sync with each other. I, I honestly had no idea how compatible they were. Um, when I was feeling like I was having a bad mental health day, I would tend to have a bad lupus day and vice versa. Um, and I didn't realize how much of an impact stress had on my flares. Like stress was like number one for the cause of my flares. Carol, hi Carol. Your mum is amazing and so are you sharing your experience. Thank you, that's so, <laughs> so lovely. Shell, joining a local lupus group has really helped me. Knowing that you're not the only go one going through lupus and being able to talk to other people really helps yes that is such an important thing i myself have never gone to a lupus support group i am quite good at finding communities online i am a gamer i am often on reddit so there are loads of little like micro communities on social media but if that's not your thing and you prefer irl in real life contact um, the Lupus UK website has so, so many different lists of help groups. Obviously at the moment that's, um, that's kind of something we can't do, but I mean, even a Facebook live, like I didn't realize how liberating this would feel for me. And I'm the one that's being asked questions. Like, I, I don't know how you guys feel about this. Um, if it makes you feel better having someone to just chit chat to even on a Facebook live and I think it's really cool to be able to share experiences with people people that I've never met before um, email me or um, they get in touch with um, me on social media and just they, I think a lot of people just want someone that understands to talk to there's so much information available now compared to when my in the 1990s that is very true um Roxanne do you feel like technology has had a really big impact on that like how available technology is and how available resources are online now I'm just curious to know like how many people have sought information on the internet over um I don't know over doctors I mean I <laughs> when I was first um experiencing symptoms that I didn't really understand and full disclosure my doctor told me it was all in my head um, I actually did what I consider quite dangerous to do which is Google symptoms because <laughs> Google will tell you everything and anything um, but fortunately googling my symptoms I found uh, Lupus UK we created a foundation in her memory primarily to create awareness that is so so beautiful Roxanne 
That is amazing. I'm a big believer in making something like, you know the expression, when you have lemons, make lemonade. That is, that is such a, such a powerful quote to me. Yes, definitely. Please share the link. I'll, if you inbox me it, um, Roxanne, I'll um, post it to Best of Beauty today. Go on, definitely the internet for me. Yeah, me too. I mean, um, that was the first time I actually found out about lupus was through Googling my symptoms. I knew nothing about lupus. I didn't even know it was a thing um, until I started Googling symptoms and the Lupus UK website popped up. I think even the NHS website is quite... Um, I think the uh, hold on. <laughs> the NHS website um, is quite brief on what it mentions about lupus, but it does link you to the Lupus UK website for more information. When Natalie, my daughter, was first ill, we couldn't even find information on lupus. That is just insane to me, and it's not that long ago. It really, really isn't that long ago. That's, I just, the power in information is, is crazy. <laughs> knowledge is power, like how the saying goes, knowledge is absolutely power. And it's validating, like I felt so validated being able to, um, being able to find something that I was like, that's it, like that, that's what I have, like those symptoms were me. Um, especially after being told that my symptoms were all in my head. Okay, today I'm going to raise, walking to raise awareness and money for Lucas UK. That's beautiful. Well done, Roxanne. So, honestly, that, that it, I, I am so inspired by everything that you have said in this chat right now. Honestly, technology has certainly helped, absolutely. Okay, um, we're coming up to the hour mark, so I'm going to do the second giveaway for the um, code. Dawn, one last time. So, again, really, really simple question. All you have to do is type the answer in chat, and I'll give you guys a minute to do that, because I know that there is, I think there's a delay. Um, so, for the final giveaway of the £10 Beauty Bear gift card, what insect is the logo for Lupus UK? What insect is the logo for Lupus UK? I'll give you another 30 seconds. This has been fun. I really, really enjoyed myself. I hope you guys did too. <laughs> Lupus UK doesn't know. Everyone tell them what it is. <laughs> Danielle, Kylie, Roxanne, James, Michelle, Heather, Carol, Nicole. Okay, we'll do the same as we did last time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of you. Ooh, okay. Pick a number between one and eight. Theory. Play ball. 
Technology. Pick a number between one and eight. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Heather, congratulations! If you want to send me a message on Beth is Beauty, I think you can do that. If not, I've opened your profile up in a different tab so that I can get in touch with you. And then I will tell you and Dawn how you can redeem the code. Thank you, Lisa Shuke. I really, really, really enjoyed myself. I am beginning to think that this may have to be a regular thing. I don't know if we talk makeup, skincare, or if I just do makeup. I don't know. What do you guys think? I got diagnosed with SLE when I was 16, 20 years later, I still don't find it easy to talk about even with my friends. Thank you so much. Um, that means an awful lot. Um, I did find it really, really, really difficult to, um, to talk about in the beginning. Um, I was a very, very angry young lady when, um, when I was first diagnosed. It, it's hard, like, I don't think people really, really understand like the mental wear and tear of what lupus can do to you. But that's why we are raising awareness and that's why I am using my mouth for good and not evil. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming along. It's been really, really fun. I was really, really nervous. <laughs> like my palms were sweating before I came on this live. And then I was having technology issues because of course I was. Um, but thank you guys so, so much for joining me. I am doing a giveaway on my Twitter page, which is at Beth Does Beauty. I will write that in the chat. If you head to that Twitter page at Beth Does Beauty, all one word, you can retweet my post and then comment underneath it to tell me you've done it. And then I will enter you in for a giveaway to win a £25 gift voucher for Spectrum brushes. Spectrum brushes are some of my favourite brushes, but they do also have makeup now. I've not tried the makeup myself. But it is a £25 gift voucher. Um, same rules apply again, UK, because it's a UK currency. I'm sorry. Um, but thank you guys so, so much for your support today. Thank you guys for joining me. I'm Roxanne. Good luck with your... Um, with your uh, walk today. Um, please let me know the, um, the foundation link and I will link it on Beth is Beauty today. Carol, going to share you with my fellow girl guiders with the hope it can be of great help in supporting girls. That's really cool. Thank you so much, Carol. That, that, oh, that makes my heart feel so warm. I feel less like Elsa, the ice queen now. <laughs> okay, guys, I am going to stop talking or else I will keep talking forever. Roxanne, have a fantastic charity walk. Thank you guys so, so much for sharing your experiences with me. I hope that you have found this of some comfort today. Maybe we will have to meet up again and do another Facebook Live because I have really, really enjoyed this. Thank you guys so much. Head to Twitter if you want to win that um, charity giveaway. Um, it would be really, really cool to see more awareness being spread. Thank you. Bye. Stay safe.